Hello, hello, and welcome to Summer Games Done Quick 2023, live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, benefiting Doctors Without Borders. Thanks, Mike. My name is Greta Doucette, and this is Layla Foulihan, and we are with Doctors Without Borders, and we're so happy to be back for the 11th Summer Games Done Quick. Doctors Without Borders, also known by our French name, Médecins Sans Frontières, or MSF as we call it, is an independent international organization. And we offer medical humanitarian aid to those in need based solely on need, irrespective of race, religion, gender, or political affiliation. MSF delivers aid to those affected by armed conflict, natural disasters, epidemics, and exclusion from healthcare. Our nearly 63,000 staff working in over 70 countries are guided by our principles of medical ethics, accountability, independence, bearing witness, and neutrality. Since we were here last year, your support has helped us respond to emergencies like the earthquake in Syria and Turkey, provide medical care in armed conflict zones like the war in Ukraine, and deliver aid to refugees and displaced people across the world. Thanks, Greta. <laughs> In order to do that, MSF relies on the generosity like, of donors like you. Over 90% of our funding comes from individual donations, which enables us to remain independent and act fast when emergencies strike. The donations raised here this week will aid Doctors Without Borders teams and make an immediate impact on our work. As we say, both MSF and GDQ teams are both pros at getting things done fast, and in just over a decade of SGDQ, this community has raised over $18.8 .8 million for our projects around the world. We couldn't be prouder of your achievement and the effort and commitment you make to support MSF. So we extend a heartfelt thank you from all of us at MSF to all of you here with us in Minneapolis and everyone watching and donating online. Thank you for being a part of our movement, for making an impact, and for bringing life-saving medical care to people in need. Thank you to everyone involved in this event, to all of the Games Done Quick staff, the runners, volunteers, corporate sponsors, and to everyone on camera and behind the scenes who make this possible. We're deeply grateful for your support and commitment to raise funds for MSF, and we're thrilled to be here with you for the SGDQ 2023. So Mike, let's kick it off. Okay, well. After a brief break online, uh, we are back on site, and it does feel good to be back on site. Now, it looks like the crowd agrees too. I like it, I like it. And, uh, but before we get this run started, there's actually a donation incentive uh, for the upcoming run of Sonic Frontiers. If you want the true ending incentive, you will need to raise $15,000 uh, before the end of the run, about an hour into the run. And I know that we have speed run donation incentives before. So do you think we can do it, crowd? I think that's a yes. So make sure you get your donations in and specify them towards the true ending incentive. And with that, take it away, Alpha Dolphin, with Sonic Frontiers. Hello everyone, my name is the Alpha Dolphin, or Alpha Dolphin, and uh, I'm a Sonic Adventure era uh, series runner, and I'm super, super glad to be here. Uh, this is my first GDQ run of all time, and uh, Sonic Frontiers is a wonderful game. We've had multiple months of uh, pure um, skill to, to uh, unlock and do a lot of stuff with the run, and very proud to show it off today. Um, with me, I have my two commentators. Hi, I'm Emerald. I also speedrun Sonic Frontiers. Uh, it's great to be here. It feels so surreal. Just looking at you guys behind me. What's up, crowd? Yo! <laughs> yeah, so, so and excited. And also here with my co-commentator as well. Yep, I'm Don SR, uh, also Sonic Series speedrunner. Uh, super excited to be here. What's up, crowd? Uh, yeah, and m me and Alpha Dolphin have been working together as moderators of this game to build up the community, and we're so proud of what it's become. So super excited to be here for the run. And uh, we have our host also here. Yeah, host, if you want to introduce yourself. Oh, you Hello? can introduce yourself, yeah. Yeah, 
there, there we are. Hello, I'm Nick R.P. Green. I'm going to be your host for the first three runs here. What do you say, folks? Shall we get the first run of SGDQ 2023 underway? Just going to go verify um, to make sure that we're on the good difficulty. Okay. Okay. We're good. We're good. All right. This is um, something that I wanted to do for a long time. Can we have a, cr a countdown with the crowd? Are you guys excited? Let's go. All right. Come with me. Three, two, two one, one, go! go! All right, uh, so first off the bat, uh, what we're going to do is uh, complete this cyberspace stage. 1-1 uh, is required pretty much to advance anywhere uh, further in the story. And uh, it's a pretty good level, I guess, to kind of like understand the physics of the game. We're going to do the first trick of the run here called a Mac dash, a homing uh, dash, or the, the gritty. The gritty. <laughs> that, that one's a fan's fa fan favorite. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we don't really need to collect anything. We can just finish the stage as uh, we don't really need to collect keys in the first island, but we'll see what happens with that later. Uh, yeah, so that was our first cyberspace stage. And that's like what you would typically come to know from like a, like a typical Sonic game, you know, get from one end of the stage to the other, maybe some collectibles along the way. But now we're here with the bread and butter of Sonic Frontiers, the open zone areas. Um, so there's a bunch of different like little movement techs you're going to be seeing Alpha do throughout the run. Um, mostly you're going to see Alpha sidestepping a lot to a lot of locations um, because it helps us maintain our speed and stuff like that when we're going like uphill slopes. And we actually can gain speed going downhill as well as stack speed with any dash pads that might be out in the, out in the world. Yeah, so we got to get through some combat tutorials here and other tutorials as well. Uh, we're going to see Alpha go through them as quick as possible. We can't skip a lot of these because we unlock a lot of really important stuff during this section. Uh, but we'll be coming up on one of, one of the first mini boss fights in the run here. Yeah, and so this is our first and only Guardian that we're going to be running into in the run, which is Ninja. Now, um, when we fight these Guardians, we get a portal gear. Uh, from them, which is just a collectible that lets us open up uh, cyberspace stages. Um, but generally, fighting these guys will be pretty slow. So we have our own ways of getting uh, portal gears later on in the run and avoid most of the, all the guardians completely, actually. So, um, and coming up here is a really funny trick called the Joshua method. Um, it is a trick that allows us to skip the second half of the tutorial here, as well as um, a few other cutscenes, and. Um, uh, that, that wastes a lot of time. An unskippable bridge cutscene, a guardian fight, and playing 1-2, which is like the infamous stage of Sonic Frontiers. Um, so unfortunately, we don't get to play that. But we do get to show a really cool trick in, uh, as a trade-off. So what Alpha's going to do is he's going to unlock Psyloop right here. And he's going to be able to charge, uh, or he's going to collect rings by spinning in circles for a bit. And what that's going to do is it's going to give him power boost, which allows us to achieve a max speed status through boost without having to level up our speed at all. So we actually don't level up our speed at all in this run. Uh, it just takes too much time to route in the Cocos and stuff like that. Uh, so Alpha's going to bring himself over to this doorway, launch past a few uh, miniature cutscenes, um, and get on top of an invisible wall, which then he will try to swing himself around, or sorry, get onto the ceiling to swing around an invisible wall to hit a spring that'll push us onto the other side of this bridge. Yeah, this trick is an interesting looking one since you end up on invisible collision and you kind of just have to be able to navigate based off of how the uh, collision looks and the backgrounds that you have there. Um, and there's a huge invisible wall in your way, so you got to go around that. You barely have enough height in the first place, so. Yeah, this launch is really specific. It, uh, it, it's kind of hard to line up, so just taking a couple tries here. It's not too big of a deal. Yeah, this is a huge reset point in runs usually, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is tough. I'm not sure why it's not reaching. I think it's just because I'm not taking enough time to... Uh, yeah, it just takes your some time here on that. Yeah. That looks better. Yeah, that definitely looks like a good launch. Yeah, the launch is... Hey, there we go. Hey, we all there we go. Good. All right. All right. So we're getting a really specific lineup with a texture that's on the, oh, the cliff no side right there. No speed. Uh, no speed, yeah. That's really unfortunate. Uh, it can happen. We're going to have to do it again. <laughs> Yeah, this trick can be really weird, and sometimes that collision that you're running on just won't give you full boost speed, and then all of a sudden, as soon as you're off of the collision, you just don't have enough uh, speed to make it all the way over. 
Yeah, oh my goodness. This is a little bit difficult sometimes. Um, yeah, basically, like, um, there, there's a couple of different ways to get up here. If Alpha maybe can't get this way, maybe he could go back and try the other one. Oh my goodness. I, I'm struggling with tutorial skip right now. Uh, yeah, this skip is pretty difficult, so. Yeah, let's get some hype for Alpha, guys. Hey, you got this, man. Let's go. We're back up. Attempt number two. Can we do it? Let's go. Yeah, take your time up here, man. You got it. Hopefully that is better. Oh, that looks a little bit better. Yep. Yeah, you're, you're chilling there. And around. Yeah. Oh, nice. There we go. Yeah, there is a huge invisible wall to get around there. It's really difficult. All right, so now we are officially past the tutorial. We're in the open zone area of the game, and Alpha is going to be avoiding all story. If you play this game casually, it's going to look very different right now. Uh, he's actually collecting skill points and doing a route for that. He's going to be unlocking the combat ability stomp right now, which is going to take 15 skill points to get. Uh, as you noticed with the homing attack for the gritty earlier, if you boost cancel out, you're able to actually gain a ton of height. So stomp is really imperative for two pieces of tech that are going to be used throughout the run. Also, for other stuff uh, like combat, it's a super powerful technique. So it, it's a mandatory part right at the start of the run. And coming up, Alpha is going to be doing a, the tech known as the slingshot. So he's going to be slide launching up right here to get up to the enemy up in the sky. And then he's going to be using a gritty to keep the lock on for longer than intended. Then he will boost or he will dodge into a stomp. And if he does it correctly, he will get a boost cancel and go flying into the sky. There it is. Yeah. So the reason we need to do this is because there's massive invisible walls blocking the entry into the boss arena. And uh, yeah, we're going to try to find Giganto. I, I don't know where he is, though. Uh, Giganto is known to be a very good uh, player of hide and seek. At least he thinks so. Uh, so we're going to go count. I'm pretty sure he will find a spot like three, two. What's that music? Okay. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> you cannot hide behind the trees, big guy. I'm sorry. It's not working out <laughs> for you. Yeah, so actually what we have in the, the arena is there is a, uh, what we think is a, a debug trigger. That's basically where Sonic spawns if you complete the island normally. Um, and you... Uh, yeah, as long as you hit that trigger, yeah. you can just completely skip the island. It doesn't check if you have emeralds or anything for Supersonic. Uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible that this works and that it's not been patched out. Yeah, no, shout out to the developers. It's been really, like, they, I'm sure they know about the, the trick's existence at this point, and they've left it in for us speedrunners. So, yeah, shout out to Sega. I know they love speedrunners over there. Mm -hmm. All right, so right now, Alpha's doing a very specific setup. I don't know if we're going to get it off of this, but yeah. if you do a specific amount of damage to Giganto in the first phase, you can potentially skip a QTE and a cutscene. Uh, for Giganto in the second phase. but So what you want to see here, if this is going to be successful, Giganto will stand still, and Alpha will be able to side loop instantly. It looks like it a, the damage output is a little bit more uh, than needed, but maybe we'll get lucky? Yeah. Oh, ah. it's, it's a finicky trick, but we can dodge the laser. Nice. Sweet. And we'll be able to get a side loop, which is going to increase the damage output by so, so much. Yeah, many people don't even know that you can side loop the bosses. I think you can side loop all of the main bosses in the game. We only do it for a couple, but this just helps shred through the boss's health. And just like that, we are done with the first island. Yeah, so we're able to skip pretty much the first two islands. Ares Island is a little bit different, though. We ha we're going to have to do a few things, uh, a few things to actually activate Wyvern so that we can skip it. Uh, so you're going to see Alpha actually start to do sort of what the rest of the game will look like, collecting materials and stuff to be able to progress. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's what you're going to see right at the start of Ares here. Yeah, so right at the right at the beginning here, we're going to be loading in. We're going to get some uh, collectibles really quick, some memory tokens right here. And then we're going to slingshot all the way to basically, well, basically the other side of the island. Oh. In the bubbles? Into the balloon. <laughs> or that in the bubbles. Happens. There's, there's a bunch of platforming sections that we can bump our heads on. Yeah, I'm sure if, you, looks better. I'm sure if you play this game casually, you're going to uh, have experienced that. Basically just running into things you did not even know were there. Yeah. Sonic, Sonic Frontiers experience. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we got, actually very conveniently have a portal gear that's on the way, so we can just open this cyberspace stage instantly. 
And uh, this is going to be 2-2, two, two, one of the, the more difficult uh, cyberspace stages in the run. Um, definitely a heavy reset point, but... It's also the first cyberspace stage where we're going to have to complete all of the challenges in one go. So when we do all of the missions, which is uh, get to the end by a certain time, collect all the red rings, and get a specific ring count based on the level, um, we unlock seven Chaos Emerald keys. So it is a lot of good resources for us to continue uh, to get like the Chaos Emeralds and such. Yeah, this stage has progressed incredibly. Look at this gritty right here. Great stuff from Alpha. Yeah, really time. good time. Really good time for that. Well done. Some of these stages really are blink, and you will miss the entire thing, because 20 seconds, that's it. Oh, yeah. Super back. Super, super back. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do a map warp. What that's going to do for us is reset us to the initial state of the island. Instead of having to travel all the way back, which would have been really slow, we can just get there in a matter of like 10 seconds just by reloading the map. Uh, and then the next thing we're going to have to do, like I said, we have to proc Wyvern to be on the island so that we can actually skip it, right? So we have to do two things to make that happen. First, we have to collect a Chaos Emerald, and the other one is we have to free Knuckles. Once those two things happen, we're going to get the Wyvern, the Wyvern chase sequence, and yeah, uh, we have something for that as well. Yeah, so the, the Wyvern es uh, escape sequence is something that we can actually skip, but through really complicated means, so I'm going to try to do my best. Stay with me here. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to go uh, talk to Knuckles one time, because after you talk to him the second time, he's free. But before we free him, we're actually going to go over to a Guardian over on the right here. Uh, we're going to see Shark's title card. And while the Guardian is aggroed, we can actually move around in the cutscene while freeing Knuckles. So we're going to set that up first. And what Alpha's going to do during this, uh, moving around during this cutscene, is he's going to position himself in front of Strider. Um, we unlock a move here. And it's going to give us a little bit of text at the bottom of the screen. But the game doesn't expect us to be right here right now. So when we aggro Strider, we actually gain movement over Sonic where we normally wouldn't be able to. Um, so what's supposed to play now is the chase sequence. But what we're going to do is we're going to position Sonic at the end of that sequence so that when it starts, it'll already end after he does his uh, animation here. Um, but this, this trick is very, it's, it's very funny how this even works. Because normally, Sonic will snap back into his original position uh, no matter what, unless he's climbing a climbable wall. And of course, there's a climbable wall. So that, I mean, hey, that's perfect. So he's going to spawn at the end, get locked into position, and he's going to have Sonic run off the cliff and die right as the cutscene is about to load. And because you can't die in cutscenes, uh, the game gets confused, and it'll skip the cutscene for you. So we effectively save a huge chunk of time here that would otherwise be an automated section. Yeah, like you said, it's honestly incredible that it works. There's like five different pieces that allow it to work, and you take out one of those things, and it just, it's not even possible. Or, or you cannot save time with it, at least. Yeah, like even if even one of those guardians wasn't in like as close to Knuckles, then it just wouldn't work out. Yeah, this, this one was a huge collaboration of people finding the different parts of it. And yeah, here we go. We'll spawn right at the end of the sequence, and if everything does goes well, we'll see a try again screen during the cutscene. And let's go. Let's go. Hey, there we go. Now, this puts the game in a really, like, the game is like, OK, what's going on, man? And it puts the game into 30 FPS. Now, uh, we used to actually just change this back right away to 60 FPS, but we found a use for it for a trick that's going to be coming up at the beginning of Chaos Island. So we only, we're going to play in 30 FPS for just a little bit, but it's just basically for this fight. Yeah, and here, you're actually going to see the original variation of the slingshot tech known as the Hedgehog Space Program. Let's go. This is a frame perfect trick. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty glad I got it. Yeah, uh, let's go. <laughs> yeah, and the time the timing changes on 30 FPS too. So it's even more impressive to have multiple muscle memories for the same trick. Very good stuff. And uh, this is a fruit roll up, um, automated <laughs> section. <laughs> um, and you're just going through it. Uh, you want to just evade uh, the attack. So this is a perfect time for donations. Fantastic. Your donations are coming thick and fast. So we have got uh, $50 from Book142 says, best of luck to all the runners and staff. And a huge thank you to the volunteers. It's for a great week and raising money for a great charity. Uh, we have got $100 from Shovel Claws, who says, call me Frontiers the way I'm here. Love you, Alpha. Woo! <laughs> Uh, more from the Sonic community. Sly Sonic says $10. Excuse me, boss. 
You're the text message. <laughs> Excuse Alpha me, Dog. Alpha Dog, the biggest dog. I'm so happy to see you up there opening GDQ. You're an amazing representation of the Sonic community and an even better friend. Just remember the three cheese pizzas. <laughs> Uh, and uh, with that, before I hand back over, just remind to everyone, we are already one-fifth of the way there to getting the true ending for this Sonic Frontiers run. So if you want to see the true ending, make sure to get your donations in. Back to you on the couch. All right. Um, so right now we're entering Wyvern. I think this is uh, probably um, most people's favorite boss because the music here is a complete banger. It is awesome. I mean, all the music in this game is just beautiful, but this is just an experience. Um, so what we're going to do here is parry uh, the missiles, and this is all RNG, so I'm pretty happy that I kind of got it through because uh, it can lose up to 30 seconds, so we want to be um, very precise with the parrying time here. Um, as far as the attack goes, we're going to Cyclone Kick, which is a new upgrade that you get uh, entering Ares Island. And um, we're just going to cancel it automatically into another stomp and do that over and over again. Uh, it does a lot more damage than just regularly stomping, which, we, which is what exactly we did for uh, Giganto. So, very nice and efficient. Yeah, it's interesting because the dodge in this game, we don't actually really ever use for combat much. I think maybe against Ninja you can do it. but. It's actually really used for all the tech, like HSP uh, here in combat as well. Basically, it's good to put Sonic in a combat state so that he can stomp or do another attack. Uh, and makes things really fast. All right, so we got some more missiles coming up. Uh, hopefully the RNG here will be kind to us because these can be a little bit brutal, and that's nice. Beautiful. Yeah, it's funny. You can boost in this section too, and sometimes if you're doing, like, untimed boost, you can get hit with a second missile after parrying the first one, and that, that just hurts, because then you have to wait for the whole cycle again. Yeah, Wyvern's a cool fight. We'll see, uh, one of my favorite parts about speedrunning this boss is uh, the music links up here perfectly. Yeah. Now the attention to detail with that was really cool in the devs. All right, so finishing up Wyvern, we have a couple more QTEs to go, and the boss fight will be all done. And that's uh, nearly two islands done real quick. <laughs> it's yeah, like that. It, it's pretty impressive that we're 17 minutes through the run, and we've already gotten through two of the biggest uh, big islands in the game. All right, and uh, one thing you may have actually not known, we'll see it coming up, not here, but for the next one, if you spin the stick, it counts as an input here. So look at that mashing. <laughs> Spinning spin. You gotta hit. You gotta hit the button so many times there. So being able to spin the stick is a really nice way, and also less damaging on the hands too. Absolutely. A couple more QTEs here, and then we'll be finished with Ares Island. Yeah, Wyvern is throwing a tantrum, and we need to give him some snacks because he's hangry. <laughs> True. He's full now. <laughs> Too full. All right, so now we're going to be heading into Chaos Island, which is the first real island of like how the developers sort of intend you to play it. Obviously, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently, uh, but we do have something interesting coming up. Like M mentioned earlier, we have been stuck in 30 FPS because of Wyvern Escape Skip, and we didn't change it for a reason. There's going to be something really cool coming up here. Alva's going to slingshot over to the tower over here, and uh, just watch the gear count here in the top left. It's right beneath the rings. Uh, we're going to get something pretty funny here. So zero gears, now we have two. Yeah. So if on 30 FPS, you can actually duplicate the gears, which is huge, because we're either going to have to fight a mini boss or have to go way out of our way to get another one. And that's going to be a huge time save for us later. So 30 FPS actually came in clutch. And yeah, so like I said, we, we used to adjust to 60 FPS earlier. But when we enter this cyberspace 3-1, which is probably one of the most difficult cyberspace uh, stages in the run, it's going to automatically change our frame rate back to 60 FPS. So it's very convenient. We don't have to do extra menuing or anything for it. Mm -hmm. But this level is a challenge. Definitely the, the biggest run killer uh, known in kind of when it comes to cyberspace stage. So hopefully everything goes well. There's also a curse in this stage for every single marathon run <laughs> ever done. So maybe we can break the curse today? We'll see. Yeah, let's get it, dude. 
Yeah, not only is this stage incredibly difficult, but they also, with the most recent update, added power boost in cyberspace, which makes you faster. It's a blessing and a curse, because on these small platforms, it's really hard to get the inputs off in time. And Alpha, OK, we're going to take it a little slow here. Oh, oh ah. dang. Oh, yeah. This it's, part is tough. It's all right, because actually this checkpoint is conveniently placed, because it puts us in a good position to still be able to get the required amount of rings. So taking a death there isn't as bad as it seems. Yeah, and in this, in this stage, you see the tech, the gritty, a ton. Look, he's just flying around. Absolutely just a playground. Good stuff. <laughs> it went kind of well. <laughs> yeah, this is, that, that was really solid. I'll and, take it. and that stage is based off of Green Forest from Sonic Adventure 2. Oh, yeah. boy, we do not like that <laughs> stage. But hey, you know what? Uh, it's cool to revisit it in, the, in this kind of light. So. Yeah, we, can, we cannot escape the stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so coming up now, we're going to be slingshotting around the map. Uh, you're going to really see the true value of slingshot coming up in these islands, uh, being able to navigate, because these, these islands are huge. And unlike some of the others, Chaos Island have the, has these massive craters in them. So being able to just fly wherever you want is going to be super beneficial for the run. Yeah, absolutely. This is where we're going to be collecting a lot more of uh, the memory tokens and stuff, because we need it to advance the story. Um, and what we're, we're trying to go, where we're trying to go is uh, to these dig spots where they have, uh, all, it'll always be set to the same treasures, quote unquote. So either portal gears, which we'll see right here, or uh, eight memory tokens in the last spot you just saw. And that just helps uh, make a very consistent route, because you can get memory tokens from other uh, means by like, uh, like killing enemies or just the strays that are out and about. And we will actually need to collect some of the strays along the way. Um, and wow, that was, that was really fast. That was really good. Yeah, super clean. Uh, so now we're loading into 3-2. Shoutouts to Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> yeah, <good shout -outs. laughs> Gordon Ramsay, the runner who desperately was trying to get to the, uh, this cyberspace stage in the run because it's so fast but it wasn't really in line with our, uh, our former routes that we had. Um, but coming up is going to be a really cool and unique trick to this, uh, to this game, which is going to be uh, is, is a trick that's used in other Sonic games, 3D and 2D. So we're going to be coming up here. We're getting our red rings and um, normal rings as we're going through the stage. We'll get this one here past this rail and double back to a spring that when we stomp after hitting it, will put us into the 3D and 2D and hit that spring in the background. Gritty upwards and basically skip the entire stage, uh, putting us right in front of that last red ring. Clean. Very well done. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. I don't know why that spring puts you in 3D, but it does. And it's awesome that it, it does, because the stage would be so long without that. Yeah, the ending section is like 40 seconds if you miss it. So you definitely want to hit that. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad we got it. Yeah. All right, so now you, we've seen really one huge slingshot so far, and here's going to be another. We're going to be doing things completely out of order of what they expect. They really don't think you can get over to the Red Emerald Island at all, Ooh. but we're going to try to do that right now so that we can get the Blue Emerald at another time, and you'll, we'll see that in a few minutes here. But yeah, you can see the true power of slingshot here. Yeah, Alpha nice. putting himself into the air so he can launch off of that enemy with the lock on, and we go way across the map. Yeah, that is visually one of the most in, like, impressive showcases of Slingshot, and just shows just how powerful the trick is. Yeah, it really makes this game so much faster, and it's nice because it's not insanely difficult of a tech. Some of them are hard, like that one, setting that up is pretty difficult consistently, uh, but it's not a huge run killer. It's just nice. Yeah, so we're going to um, map warp again, which is um, we're pretty much on the opposite side of the island from where we need to be. So map warping is a really quick way for us to get back to kind of like the center so we can go to the other side. Yep, and now we're going to see why collecting the red emerald there is actually such a huge bonus for us, because uh, we're going to be able to go into the next escape sequence. They're pretty much on nearly every island. Obviously, we skipped the Kronos one. Uh, but we're going to have plenty of tech for this escape sequence as well when uh, the knight comes in. We're going to be slingshotting over to Free Tails, our buddy, our old pal. <laughs> the homie. All right. And the interesting thing about this segment coming up is every single part of it is broken. There's a skip at the beginning. There's a skip in the middle. And there's a skip at the end. And we're going to be going for every single one of them. 
Yeah, so we're setting up a, a potential cutscene skip here. This Bring. one is maybe. Uh, we want to see tech storage here. Uh, uh, did that maybe? work? I'm not sure. I think it showed up at the same time. Oh, oh we got it. Oh, let's go. Awesome. All right, us being able to move there is good because now we can advance into the next cutscene and die in the cutscene. And if we remember from Wyvern Escape Skip, what happens when we die in a cutscene? We get to skip it. Skipped it completely. Yeah, so now we're immediately into this chase sequence or, or, uh, where you're getting chased down by the shield. Alpha's going to put himself on a very, very tiny slope. This trick is very difficult to line up, very precise. Uh, yeah, the camera does not do us any favors either. Yeah, no, we can't turn it at all around here. But there is a, a big invisible kill box that's around us that has uh, an actual opening at the top. So yeah, you see Alpha launch above and out of the box, land on the squid to initiate the auto-scroll sequence that we were supposed to be on. And uh, now we, we have to wait. We actually have to wait for the squid because um, he has to go to the end of the sequence, or um, and if we beat him there, the game crashes. So we have to wait for that. But he goes a lot faster because the game's like, well, wait, where's Sonic? Sonic's not on the trail, so he must be in front. So that means it, it, it pushes the squid way faster than he's supposed to go. Um, and he, as you see, Alpha is launching over to this island where we'll be able to touch the uh, cutscene trigger. And uh, since we still have some more downtime, we can uh, get our memory tokens here and unlock the cyberspace stage but not go into it. Um, so we're just, we, we watch this cutscene. The squid's actually still moving in the background. You just can't see him right now. Um, and he's going to position himself for the cutscene skip, uh, that, for the cutscene that happens after the sequence. And it's, this one is pretty precise, too. He has to position himself to touch the trigger and die at the same time. Let's see if he gets it. Come on. That's going to be very close. We nice. died. Hey, let's go. Yeah, this setup is very, very difficult. Yeah, that, that one's especially difficult because I, if, I don't know if you noticed, but normally when you try to do that, you can line up and you'll spawn right where Sonic died. But Alpha did it so quickly, the game didn't even refresh that he was there. And so he spawned next to the cyberspace portal, saving even more time. But it's super difficult. And uh, if you played this game casually, you probably remember this drifting stage. And uh, yeah, uh, we, we don't like it either. We just. But you can just jump over the dash pads, and you don't have to drift at all. Yeah, I think very few people think of just jumping over them or just going to the sides of them. Uh, but yeah, we, we avoid them because it is slower to take them. Yeah, we're not a huge fan of the stage, but it's fast, and that's what matters. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good time. All right, so now we have to continue collecting and advancing the story uh, we're going to go and find our buddy Tails once again over on a big island. You're supposed to do a huge platforming challenge to get there, but that's slow. So we're going to go ahead and use a slingshot here to get over to him real quick. Yeah, the, ah. no the normal way you're supposed to do this is there's the big island in the, in the center there. You're supposed to like get a ramp on the other side and go through it, but we can just slingshot up here. Very speedy. And uh, we're going to be seeing a few more slingshots to just navigate back to the main island because pretty much everything we, need, we got needed over here we got already. We're going to collect some more keys and memory tokens real quick, though. Yeah. Now, you might be wondering why we actually have to go and talk to Tails, and it's because um, we need to progress Tails in the story because he gives us access to a couple of mini games to be able to unlock uh, Chaos Emeralds that we need uh, to finish the island. So we'll be going over to and collecting stuff along the way just to push him along. Uh, there's a little bit of a skip there. It's not very that huge, but um, if you stomp as you're grabbing the key at the same exact time, you can still move while the cutscene is still loading to uh, put you into the trigger of the Chaos Emerald. Um, and that saves around like two or three seconds. You can do that like two or three times in a run. It's uh, very efficient. Yeah, and this is uh, Ikaruga. Uh, a little hacking mini game that we get to partake in uh, during uh, the different island sections. Um, and there's not really a whole lot going on here. We're just, you know, if you're shooting the black shots, you can tank the black uh, bullets. Uh, same goes for white. Um, and we're just trying to shoot the centerpiece here. Uh, so this would actually be a great time for some donations. We just got to watch uh, a cutscene and get a few more collectibles before the next big trick. All righty then. Uh, we are nearly at $5,000 towards that 15000 for the true ending. So please keep your... Please keep your donations for that coming in. We have already hit our first $10,000 of the event, though. Ooh. 
Absolutely fantastic. More love coming in from the Sonic community. We've got $20 from Spec Wee, who says, Hey, Alpha, I just wanted to write a note to share with everyone how amazing you are, both as a runner and as a friend. I love you so much. Heart eyes. <laughs> Uh, we had $2,500 from Mott, who says, Hello, I've been wanting to attend a GDQ event for a while, but never could get the time off work. This year, with the change schedule, I could have done the trip and all that, but then I would not be able to also donate so much since this year has been a bit rough. So instead, I will just follow along from home and donate the difference. Much love, Mott. Wow. All right, so coming up here, we have another huge slingshot that's going to save us a ton of time skipping another platforming challenge. Massive one over here, slingshotting all the way over to the gray emerald over here. Very nice, because that, that segment is slow otherwise. Yeah, it's, it's very, very slow. There's not, once you're locked in it, there's no way to make it really any faster either. Mm. Yep, and we're going to do a uh, kind of weird slingshot here, because you have to make it around the mountain, so it's pretty precise. Nice. Nice. Beautiful. Good stuff. Yeah, that was really good. That slingshot is way more difficult than it looks. It's way easier to like bunk onto the, the ice mountain, and then you just kind of get trapped there and either try to go back and reattempt or just slowly make your way over to this mini game. Live and learn. Let's go. For defense. Yeah. Got to do it. You know? Let's go. <laughs> Live and learn. All right, so we have one of those mini games that M mentioned earlier to unlock a Chaos Emerald. This is the Nuts and Bolts mini game. You have to get 600 of them. Uh, one thing to watch out here for is sometimes those boxes will push, when they spawn, the bolts will be under the platform. And so uh, they just are completely disappeared, and you will not be able to get them because they're in the lava. So hopefully we don't see that happen. Yeah, hopefully. We, we don't really like when the game uh, deletes our nuts. Uh, we really try hard to avoid it, but, you know, <laughs> it, it doesn't work out every time. So we're doing our best here to try to make sure we have 400 nuts before we get back up to this island here where we'll be able to collect the rest of them. And pretty much, uh, it's pretty consistent. There's so many up here that we don't really have to worry about it from this point on and just break all the boxes, get these, and then we're done. Yeah, you, you got to get pretty unlucky to not be able to complete the mini game. Good stuff. Well done. All right, so that was the green Chaos Emerald. We have nearly all of our Chaos Emeralds so far. I believe we need two more plus the final one uh, off of night. But yeah, we're going to be heading over to the Yellow Emerald Island right now. Doing a cool tech there, known as Air Jordan, if you sidestep off of a ledge. Sonic will just go flying into the trick, trick launch state, which is really cool. Nice little tech. Yeah, let, let's just clear a lot of uh, like gaps that are they're around that size where like otherwise we would maybe need this slingshot if it was way bigger, but that's just way faster to do if you can. Yeah, going around is slow. Why would we do that? Yeah. <laughs> Get a little slingshot off of the, the map challenge there. Talk to Tails one last time and get, skip some cutscenes and get the yellow emerald. Yeah, after this, we'll go ahead and do another map warp and visit yet another minigame. This is basically the point where we just say, okay, we've done all the story. Let's just go get some Chaos Emeralds. Yep. All right, so we have another huge slingshot coming up here, which is going to be a pretty cool one. I, I personally like this one. I think it's pretty cool, but yep. you can get locked up. Uh, yeah, and a lot of the time it's really just, you know, like traveling all the way across. Sometimes there's just not good slingshot locations. But fortunately, right at the start of Chaos Island, there's perfect opportunities like this one. We are zooming. Well done. All right, and now we get to play <laughs> every runner's favorite mini game. <laughs> Bridge mini game, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, basically, we just get to fall through some rings and, uh, yeah, get to the bottom. That, this would be, uh, I don't know if you guys want to talk about the, the mini game or if this would be a good time for donation, maybe for a sec. Probably a good time for donation. <laughs> yeah. I will take it then. Uh, so we've got $10 from Las Lotus. Here's to another GDQ. Super stoked that Frontiers gets to kick off the event. Uh, best of luck on the run and 3 1 Alpha. And shout out to the amazing Frontiers speedrunning community as well. $100 from Robo Jace. Excited for another great SGDQ. This is our daughter's first time watching, and her favorite game is Sonic. So off to a great start. Hi, Erin. 
I'll uh, keep going as I see you're still Ooh. falling. No. <laughs> Very unfortunate. Um, sometimes that enemy can hit you multiple times, <laughs> and then you have to play the mini game again. This is why it's our favorite. And uh, the attack gets out very, very quick, like pretty much like instantly. So when you're you think you're having time to pretty much attack the enemy and then get under, uh, the enemy just starts the attack cycle, and then you get stuck in the enemy. There's nothing you can do about it. So very scary part of the of the run. Yeah, it, it definitely feels like it shouldn't be a reset point, but. That enemy in particular is a bully. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Slightly wrong timing or wrong position, and he's just going to take up. Even if you have three hits left, uh, he, he does not take kindly to trying to go fast. Yeah, we probably have time for like one more quick donation before uh, we get into some other stuff. Sure, we got $50 from Max Zeno. Alpha, stop making me want to play Frontiers Challenge. Difficulty <laughs> impossible. Good luck, man. You're the GOAT. There we go. All okay. Right. Let's we're, go. we're through. We're through. We defeated the bully. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So coming to the end of this minigame, we're going to be prepping ourselves to basically just go to the end. Um, this, uh, I believe this uh, minigame gives us a Chaos Emerald as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're just going to go fly over and talk to Tails one more time and set up um, another really big trick uh, in this run. But just before that, we have a very sad bridge. Um, we have to take time to appreciate the bridge cutscene. Yeah, they absolutely. are unskippable. Yes, they, they are beautiful. Magnificent, <laughs> magnificent. Sonic Team really wanted us to appreciate the infrastructure of these bridges in this mm -hmm. game. All right, one more big slingshot. Chaos has so many of them. Nice. Good job, yeah. Yeah, that, that one is tough to set up because the collision there really likes to mess you up if you're trying to slingshot. And uh, also, it's just super hard to navigate correctly to the right spot. Yep. But yeah, very clean from Alpha. Right there, too, there's also a 2D section trigger that's like right on the edge of that cliff. So if you, far, if you walk just a little too far forward, you'll end up getting stuck in that and have to go out the, uh, the other end. All right, so we're going to do some autosave stuff here and set our position for some crazy stuff for the skip. Uh, everybody's favorite thing casually, pinball. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, fortunately, the community worked day in and day out for weeks after this came out to skip this. And we found a really elaborate setup, but it works. Yeah, abusing the, uh, the autosave function. So Alpha uh, very particularly broke a box on his way up to this door. That's going to set our autosave location so that when we exit pinball here and reload the file, it actually puts Sonic in a different position than right in front of the door where he's supposed to be. So what Alpha's going to do is blindly navigate Sonic here to the edge so that that way Sonic is put in a position to die while he's in pinball. So let's see if he can do it. This, this trick is very hard. This looks kind of good. That does look good. It does look pretty good. And so he pauses the cutscene pause. to pause Sonic. We want to see the try again screen. Wait. Wait for it. Yo, yes. yo! Well done. Yeah, and that, that trick is, is really difficult. But basically what it does is it, uh, it sets pinball to being in a state where it's like, OK, well, you're not in pinball and you died. So what, what are we going to do? So we, we have Sonic die here a couple times to push the uh, story objective forward. And now it says, as you can see, head to the crater. So we just have to die here a few more times, and then we can go pay the knight a visit. So what I did there is I uh, did in there Jordan uh, to make sure I had a lot of height when I dropped there. Why so? Um, so we are still up here when night is still spinning. By the way, uh, Disney on ice, uh, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he's auditioning for Disney on ice right now, skating around down there. <laughs> yeah, this this whole fight, he's just uh, he's trying really hard. You know, he's trying to prove that he he can he has what it takes. And we get to watch the uh, performance one more time really quick as, you know, he's just spinning <laughs> around. And we just got to wait for him to throw up uh, his shield here. And then Alpha's going to perform a uh, dodge oh. to get around the shield and position himself. Uh, oh, yeah, getting caught on the head there. That can happen really easily. Yeah. Yeah, this boss collision is really weird. If, you, if you're slightly off, he will just grab you and you cannot escape. I'll just uh, do it the normal way. 
Yeah, we get another try at it here. So we're between the shield and uh, the boss. So we can just side loop in between them and throw them up into the air. And if you remember from the Giganto fight, we are just going to melt through the Knight's health here. Yep, one more, one more round on the trampoline. <laughs> just bouncing. All right, so in this segment coming up right here, phase two, you need to catch Knight's shield and throw it back at him. If we get really lucky, the shield will come straight at Alpha. Otherwise, we'll have to chase it down and uh, try to hit Knight with it. It's actually pretty tough to do so, but... We'll see if we get lucky here. Mm -hmm. Saves a lot of time. Yes! Ooh, let's go! That's really fast. Nice. That's perfect, RNG. Yeah, that is, that is perfect. It, it, worst case scenario, it goes to like kind of like uh, para, or, uh, it, it goes the opposite way from where you are. So you have to chase it down, and he likes to break your ankles too. Mm -hmm. He decides very randomly when he wants to go a different direction. Uh, and he can even sometimes fake you out and pretend to slow down and then speed up. It's really funny. Yeah, that, that was super lucky. You really rarely see that yeah. in runs. <laughs> really cool. You got the marathon luck. And uh, coming up, one of the coolest cutscenes probably in the whole Sonic series. <laughs> oh yeah, love that one. Yeah, the, the boss fights of this game are definitely one of the big highlights of it for sure. I, as a Sonic fan, this was just so cool to see. Yeah, a comically large sword, and he's supersonic, so it does not matter. He it does not matter. It. <laughs> he can pick it up. So I loop can do anything. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right, and this is the end of Chaos Island. And coming up is Rhea Island, which is uh, a very short island. It, we don't have to collect any of the Chaos Emeralds or memory tokens or anything like that. All we have to do is climb to each of the top of the towers uh, through some brutal platforming sections. But uh, we, we are speedrunners. We have some really cool tricks to get around that and uh, make this island... Uh, look like it's it's tiny, tiny, tiny and fast. Yeah, so like Alpha mentioned earlier, doing the HSP is actually frame perfect. And so not only on top of that, he's going to be trying to perform an HSP off of this first tower here, but also it's on a slanted surface, which I'm not really sure why, but it does make the timing a bit more precise. And uh, it's going to, this is probably one of the harder ones coming up here, but in, in total, Rhea Island is an insane gauntlet. First hey, try. first try. Let's go. Incredible stuff. So the high part is not over. We have another really cool slingshot here. Alpha's going to try to gritty off of this enemy and land on a platform and then perform a slingshot after all of that. Let's see. Nice. Ah, let's go. Yeah, that, that trick is very difficult. Getting the positioning to get Sonic to land on that, like, kind of loop platform area is, is way harder than it looks. All right, so one thing we actually haven't seen from the run so far, you can actually hit a frame-perfect slingshot. All of the slingshots you've seen have been the late frame for... On HSP, you basically get no height, but on slingshot, because we're so far away from the enemy, we get so much speed that we're just able to fly and navigate really quickly. But here, because the towers are so high, Alpha's going to be looking to do a frame-perfect slingshot here. And uh, it, the timing is a little different than an HSP. Let's Yo, go. Yo, first try. Let's go. That is super hard. That one is definitely probably the most difficult slingshot. Uh, just because also, not only do you have to hit the frame-perfect, but there's a bunch of platforms in the tower directly above you that Sonic can bonk his head on. And if you, hit, if you bonk his head, then you have to just run all the way back to the enemy. There's no quick way to back that up. I know he's making it look easy, but this is the, one of the hardest parts of the run, so... Yeah, this, this is genuinely, like, a huge reset point. Multiple frame-perfect inputs. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Another one. Well done. So here, another really cool thing. To avoid the frame-perfect inputs, we're actually going to be doing uh, two non-frame-perfect -frame slingshots here to just try to build up some, some consistency. But the setups are pretty precise. So what Alpha's going to do here is try to find an enemy, gritty off of it onto the ground, and then he can slingshot. A cool thing about this is the horizontal speed will turn into vertical as soon as he lets go. Right there.
Yeah, and that's definitely the the, the highest uh, slingshot he'll need to hit with uh, doing that strat of let going, letting go of the slingshot to go up. But he's going to do it again right here for this final tower. Line himself up with this enemy. And let's go. Nice. Well done. That was such a good Rhea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was, was wonderful. <laughs> This is like one of those parts of the run where you enter it and you're on really good pace. You're so nervous. It's really hard to do. So, yeah, that, that was incredible. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure that was a sub three Rhea. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, ridiculous, but. Yeah, that's really good. All right, we're heading into the final island, Arenos Island. Uh, here, we're going to have to collect a ton of memory tokens, way more than we've had to before. The total is 190. Uh, so, we're going to be doing a lot of co collecting stray memory tokens out in the open. Uh, just grabbing them whenever we can from jumping off rails, just running, whatever we can do, like this one right here, for example. Yeah, so then we're actually going to slingshot off of uh, the Jelly Man here. And we're going to fly over to this island. We're, we're supposed to be on this side of the island way later, uh, but it's just convenient for us to get these collectibles on our way to our uh, first cyberspace stage. Um, and you may have noticed, too, at the beginning of the island, uh, Alpha was going out of his way to collect some purple coins. And that's actually because we've been collecting them throughout the whole run uh, to go visit a friend of ours who's around here, uh, Big the Cat. Yeah. Yeah, go. We love Big the Cat. He, he's such a homie. He actually helps us out so much in this run. We get uh, a ton of uh, the collectibles that we need uh, from fishing and, and paying him a visit. So. Yep, so for now, we're going to continue to collect some of, some more material so we can progress the story and uh, really just run around the island until we can meet up with Big. And the nice part about Big is he scales so well into the final island that you're going to be able to get a lot from just staying there just for a little bit. Yeah, that was a really good slingshot over there to under uh, the bridge where the portal gear was. That one is uh, pretty difficult, pretty easy to get caught. Yeah, Reynos Island really likes to test how good and well controlled your open zone movements are. Because you gotta get some really good slingshots, some really tight movement to get all of these uh, all of these memory tokens that you need. Yeah, and this is kind of like how we were expecting uh, the run to sort of uh, look like when we were getting started running this game. We found the really big skips at the beginning, but um, this is a truly artful showcase of just how good the movement and stuff is. Uh, zipping around the islands, getting all the collectibles. I mean, this, this, is, this is real speed right here. Yeah, Alpha really makes it look easy, but that whole segment is so, so difficult. <laughs> and speaking of difficult, we have probably the second hardest uh, cyberspace stage in the run. This, this stage goes by pretty quick, but uh, this stage actually allows you to make less mistakes than most. Because uh, if, you get, if you take a single hit, you probably won't be able to have enough rings to complete it. We actually meet the, the ring count for uh, the mission here uh, just like about halfway through. And it, there, there won't be really enough rings to collect if we do manage to get hit here. So let's hope that that doesn't happen. Yeah, zero ring leniency as well. So it's not even just getting hit. It's like if you miss a single ring, you're going to be losing a lot of time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is Gritty's here. Get an angled one off of that enemy. Nice. And wow, well done. Had... Very good. Let's go. Yeah, 33 is a really good time for that. Yeah, that is amazing stuff. Uh, again, really making it look easy. We're just, you know, we're, we're building it up as a super difficult thing, and he's just nailing it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. You're making us look bad. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> No, you're doing great, man. Absolutely. All right. So uh, in typical Arenos fashion, we're going to continue just grabbing memory tokens on the way. We're going to Red Emerald, but we may as well get some resources on the way, right? And yeah, we're, we're already at 44 memory tokens. going to be in the 50s now. Uh, but yeah, we, st we have to go pay uh, our friend a visit in a moment here. And yeah. we're going to get a lot of resources for it, too. Yeah, so this slingshot can be kind of annoying, but... Uh, yeah. It deloads very easily, so you need to know exactly the distance, like super precise. And I mean, hey, we're just going to fly to space instead. What if? <laughs> Being a little bit uh, too gamer there, he hit the frame perfect input, but uh, it, it still gets us to where we need to go. It's just Sonic needs to stomp down. But. Looks like this stomp is super powerful, though. I mean, <laughs> there's like a blue aura <laughs> really everywhere. <gonna> <laughs> yeah, just wanted a nice view of Arenos Island, you know?
Yeah, and we're arriving at destination. All right, so now we got the blue emerald. We've been making good progress through and get some more memory tokens as well. There's a ton around this whole island. I think they knew how absurd the count was because they're just everywhere. Yeah, and so coming up is the fishing. Uh, we actually wanted to play a little bit of a game here between the three of us to see if we can guess what fish is going to come up next. That is true. Because uh, it is a, a bit of RNG. So. Uh, All right. I'll, I'll, I'll start us yeah, off here. Start us off, Don. Let's go. Big, let's go. Give it up for Big the Cat. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and guess a frog for Froggy. Okay. <laughs> ah. ah, no frog. Okay. Okay, okay all right. All right there all right. is a lot of fish to pull from, so. Mm -hmm. I got the next one. I got the next one. I have a good idea. Um, we'll see. We'll see, though. Whoa, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love how excited Big is. He's, he's just, you know, he's so wholesome. Can I hold it together? For sure. <laughs> all right, so what's the next one, Alpha? Uh, golden platinum fish? Oh! oh okay. Well done, let's go. <laughs> one out of two, one out of two. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. That's a good guess. All right, my turn. I'm going to guess... Um, octopus. Ooh, that's a good guess. Uh, I think it's the blue ring one, right? I mean, I think there's only one octopus. Oh! Okay, yeah, let's go. There's only one octopus. All right, well, I guess the pressure's on me now. I got the first one wrong. Come on, we got uh, it. All right. Uh, let's go. Uh, Marlin. Marlin? Okay, we're getting rough RNG, too. There's no way we, we did it on the third time. Yeah, the delay on the bite, too. You're tripping. Whoa. Yo, what? let's go. <laughs> How is it possible? All right, well, uh, you know, if you couldn't tell from our amazing <laughs> acting skills, uh, <laughs> The, the fishing order is actually not RNG, unfortunately. Uh, a lot of people are kind of disappointed to figure that out, but it's, hey, it helps for us, for speedrunners. A but tire! It's a tire! It's a tire. I mean, Shots we, to a tire. You got that, right? <laughs> um, so basically, yeah, so the game pulls from a list. It is the same order every time, so that's why we're able to use it so consistently in the speedrun. Um, I, I was pretty disappointed casually to figure out that it wasn't random, but hey, it helps us a lot, a lot. Like, this, it makes this island so much faster to be helped out by our homie Big the Cat. So let's hear it for Big the Cat one time. One time for the crowd. Now, uh, the one thing that actually is RNG, which we actually kind of briefly mentioned, is uh, when you're casting out the line, the amount of time that it takes for a fish to bite on, uh, and for you to reel it in, that is, that is random. Mm -hmm. So it can be anywhere from like zero to around like 30-ish seconds. And we've seen some runners get really, really unlucky <laughs> with some of the fishing. Yeah, there are some clips of like 20, 30 seconds of just nothing. And all of a sudden, you were on a good pace, and your run's just gone. It's, Fortunately, it's rare. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah, it is really rare, but it's really funny to watch the runners like when it's like 10 seconds in and you're like, come on, <laughs> where's it at? <laughs> where's my bite? <laughs> and um, it's uh, safe also to say that uh, every single time that we miss a red ring there, uh, the count still goes down even if you miss the fish. So um, we have a very specific route here to uh, pretty much buy items from the shop, which is super, super cool. Um, for the run, it helps us uh, get a pretty much a way easier time, I guess, going around. Um, yeah. And if you mess up one, um, that's eight tokens. And eight tokens are probably around, like, eight memory tokens. And it's an entire dig spot, so it's uh, a lot of memory tokens that we need to go out of our way to get, which is, like, minutes of time loss. So yeah. very careful in the red rings there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we've changed the routing for what you actually buy from Big there quite a few times. Now we focus on buying the Chaos Emerald keys because it allows us to skip an entire cyberspace stage which obviously with the loading screens, with everything, it saves so much time. Yeah, so coming up here, we're just getting a few more collectibles, and then we're going to visit another beautiful bridge. And of course, <laughs> we got we to gotta bring this bridge down uh, with a hacking minigame, so this would actually be a, a great time for some more donations. Fantastic. Uh, we've got $50 from Sierra. It's the first SGDQ for my spouse and I as a married couple. So what better way to start than a first-time runner burning through Sonic Frontiers? Uh, good luck, Alpha. You've got this. We have got $100 from Lethia Barrett. Hi, Lethia Barrett here with the spare cash to actually donate for once. Good cause, good event, 
what's not to like. Donating to see that true ending of Frontiers. May the random number gods bless all the runners this GDQ. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to have another wonderful cutscene <laughs> where we can admire the incredible infrastructure of the ancients building yet another bridge. We would need a moment of silence here. This is very yep. important. <laughs> It's just so perfect, man. I can't believe it. Amazing. Look how fast that was. Amazing. Beautiful. Magnificent. Excellent. Yes. Now, how do we appreciate this beautiful bridge? We go over it. Yeah. <laughs> we're not even going to set foot yeah. on this bridge. We're, we're just going to slingshot right over it right, right away. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, appreciate bridge. It, I'm, I'm sure someone's going to use that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, actually, we, we were already on this side of the island earlier. Uh, we weren't supposed to be over here until we made that bridge. Um, but we collected all the, the uh, collectibles on the right side, and now we're making our way to the left. And uh, this will conveniently set us up after we get some uh, the memory tokens and stuff to slingshot from Jellyman all the way over to that yellow beam of light over there where the yellow emerald is. Some nice slingshots there from Alpha. One of the really hard parts about Arenos Island is you have to have such particular slingshots because some of them you need to slingshot straight into a tiny little memory token. And uh, he's just been nailing it so far. Awesome he, movement there. Yeah, he glided into that ring that was kind of over the cliff. That was, <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> that was a dangerous maneuver. And here's a pretty tough slingshot because if you mess up the angle at all, you will hit an invisible dome there. But Alpha expertly goes around it. I don't know if we'll be able to reach around. Yeah, we are. Um, I'm one uh, short for uh, the token, so it's a very nice scenario to actually be able to go over. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice, nice backup token there. And there we go. Nice. All right, sweet. So actually, that invisible dome that we went over is actually the final arena for the, uh, the boss fight in this area. And unlike the other uh, zones, it actually has a big like, invisible dome. Even if we were able to find some way to clip into it, it would push us right out. So. Uh, but it's actually, we're, we're not complaining, because honestly, it's really cool that we get to skip maybe the first two islands of the game have like really huge skips, but then we get to like actually use all of the, our movement uh, tricks and stuff like that to uh, get some more play time out of the game as well, you know? Yeah, it's actually a pretty nice, it's like an ideal mix of uh, skippable versus unskippable stuff as well. Yeah. All right, so now we're basically just going to have a bunch of platforming and slingshots here to try to collect the last bit of memory tokens that we need. Alpha just breezing right through it all. Yeah, and then this is this is all leading up to uh, the final cyberspace stage of the run, um, which is also kind of a, a cool stage because originally, I mean, it is a very short stage, but we originally thought that there was not going to be a way for us uh, to do all the missions in one go until. Uh, a really, really, really cool route was developed. And it's still pretty strict on the timing, but uh, when, when you see it in action, it's just, it, it's art for sure. Yeah, it is by far the uh, lowest time as an S rank in the game with 30 seconds. They really, I, I believe they actually intended to make it so you couldn't do it in one go like that. Uh, but guess what? We did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Alpha is looking. Pretty good on memory tokens. We're going to need two more before the end, plus a dig spot. And yeah, loading into the final cyberspace stage. This one's pretty tough. Like like M mentioned, if if you mess up anything, really, uh, you either going to have to restart or run it again to get whatever you missed. Yeah, pretty it's pretty stage. much it's pretty much a guaranteed reset either way. So so we're going to homing attack this pulley. Stomp down on that trick ring. Grady over to the right here. Right into the ring. Perfect. Yeah. Grab this red ring right here. And another blink and you'll miss it stage. Yeah, well done. Good Great stuff. stuff. Let's go. All right, and yeah, and that was our last cyberspace stage of the run. So the rest of it is just going to be a little bit more of uh, open zone collecting stuff. 
and making our way to the final boss. A lot of Emerald cutscenes, they gotta let us know. They're available. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, one more slingshot over here to go over to one of the last Emeralds. We still have the final one to go grab, but now that's it. We just need one more Emerald before the final bosses of the game. And uh, we'll, we'll find a memory token somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple on the way. Uh, we're not going to be able to reach it, but I have a backup for this. Okay, Ooh, that's a new that one. that was, yeah, I have not seen that before. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's super sick. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, too, uh, if, if you were, like, short maybe a couple here, I mean, for marathon safety, we could have, like, silooped for some of them. Because silooping actually does spawn memory tokens, too. It is just completely random, so. Um, so if, uh, this is, like, one of the first hacking minigames where we have to pay a little bit of attention, but it is still one of the hacking minigames, so we definitely have time for a few donations before the final boss here. Fantastic. A reminder to everyone, we do still have the donation incentive for the true ending. Uh, we still have uh, a little way to go on that, so please get your donations in because the time on that is going to be coming up shortly. Yes, it's very, very soon. It's like about a minute. So. Yeah, we have very, yeah, very, we have a, we have a minute. Yeah. Yeah, just got to do it by the end of the boss. Come on. We're almost there. We have $15 from Sly Dante. Great to see GDQ back in person. It's even more great you're starting off with some amazing runs. Loving Alpha Sonic Frontiers run so far and put my donation towards both. Fighting the Cheddar Bordle Rex in Bug Snacks and going for the true ending in Sonic. We have to see them both. <laughs> We got fifty dollars from Draco. I remember first watching Frontier Runs and watching as the run continued to get crazier every day since release. Amazing to see how far the run has gotten at this point. Best of luck, Alpha, and remember, never stop going fast. So this is the, our final chance right now to actually uh, reach the Emerald, because um, we have to be on the hard difficulty to be able to. Uh, beat the secret boss. Yes. Yeah, so have we have we met our our goal for chance? Unfortunately, we uh, have not. You will not be going for the true ending. Ah, that's okay. It's okay. Yeah, we still uh, we'll still kind of get to see how it plays out anyway. Um, basically, what the true ending would be is we have that hacking mini game we've been playing. Uh, we get uh, a pretty long-winded one uh, where we get to hear the final mono uh, monologue. But we're loading into here our final boss fight Supreme. And we're going to try to lock him in place here. It's actually random uh, if he retaliates uh, quickly at you after the first punch. But it seems that Alpha's got him locked into place. And we're into phase two. Let's go. Yeah, in this fight, this is really the first time you're going to see us not really using Stomp much in the fight at all. Uh, you're going to use Cross Slash here, and the, the finicky part with that is it's pretty hard to activate Cross Slash, but at least once you do, you can restart it every time. And so usually it would only go for a set amount of time, but you can just keep refreshing that timer and basically lock Supreme into place. Nice. Yeah, there we go. This phase is the tricky one for <laughs> sure. Yeah, playing with a little bit of RNG there, but we are, we are golden here. All right, so at this point, the boss's HP is going to lock, and we need to destroy one of his toys, and he's going to throw a bit of a tantrum here. So he's uh, getting out the big guns. <laughs> <laughs> he's reaching. And uh, all we're going to do here is, uh, yeah, we're just going to uh, dodge it. Yeah. No big deal. Do the final hits here. Let's go. That was supreme. That was supreme, but that is not time yet. We still got some time before that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, now we got to see how the end of the game unfolds. Yeah, do you want to talk about that a little bit, or do you want to do some donations up until the final time? Um, I was just about to say that the soundtrack just never misses. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's just too good. And, uh, yeah. This is the final part of the run, I guess, that you kind of like see a little bit more about the lore. Um, Sage being Eggman's daughter. I'm sorry, spoilers for the people that didn't play it yet. I, I, I didn't mean <laughs> to. Um, not like we're speedrunning it right now, but anyway. Um, 
Yeah, so Supreme is down right now, and uh, Sage and Sonic are reaching out in space to uh, go defeat the true enemy, which is uh, what we would have seen uh, in, on the true ending uh, cutscene, but it's reaching out for the same thing, so uh, it's a beautiful ending, and uh, right now it's just pretty much a big cutscene um, to kind of kind of catch up on the lore for everyone playing, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Is that it? <laughs> well, <laughs> not necessarily. Ah. Uh... <laughs> You see. It's retreating into space to regain its true form. Even Supersonic won't be able to stop it. I know what I must do. I must leave you. So together we're going to go uh, up into space. And either way, even though we're not doing true ending, we still go and we see the fight uh, play out. Uh, time is going to be after we do our final of three QTEs. Um, now, you would still do those QTEs in True Ending. It's just that in True Ending, you also get to hear the end kind of say its side of things and uh, give you like a little bit more insight. Before it regains its full strength. Yeah, the entire, ga entire game, the end has been manipulating Sonic to get to this point where it can be freed, basically. Yes. Uh, but now they need to go defeat it. This was me going to Minnesota. <laughs> 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 Got a jet. Awesome end music here for the very climactic finish. Guys, uh, it's the end. The end. The end. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> he took your lives. Are you going to let him do it all over again? I need your help. We can end this. Please. All right, and that's where you would take control, but uh, it's now acting as if you had already completed uh, the boss fight here. Wait, actually, we, are, we might be able to do Splat Percent. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could. You guys want to see Sonic crash into the moon? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> All right. So let's see what happens if Sonic doesn't save the world. Oh, yeah, this QT is really tough. Oh, no. Oh, no! <laughs> uh. Splat! Uh. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call Splat Percent. <laughs> All right, this time we'll actually try and close out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> close out the game on a high note. Yeah, so the thing is, is if you were to try to do that and see the funny cutscene uh, after doing the true ending, you would have to play the boss fight for true ending all over again. Yeah, it's like five minutes. <laughs> so this, is, so even though we didn't get to show off that, at least we got to show off Splat Percent. All right, and time's coming up on the third Q3. Three, two, two, and... Time! Time! Let's go, dude. Good stuff. Alpha, 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 alpha. Oh, 107. Oh, wow, that's a pretty good time still. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Good stuff. Really, really good. Well, I want to uh, thank both of you commentators for being so awesome and just helping me through this run. I would not have done it without you guys. Uh, you're amazing. You both are amazing. Thank you, man. Happy to be up here supporting you. Absolutely. All right. Any any final words to close us out, Alpha? Um, thank you so much, uh, Summer Games on Quick, for having me, especially at the headline of the run. I uh, of the whole marathon, I was not uh, ready for that at all. I uh, jump off my seat, and I'm very very proud uh, to have achieved. That's that's a one in a lifetime dream, and. Um, I want to sh give a massive shout out to the Sonic Speedrunning community for over the years uh, to keep uh, performing and doing everything they can to optimize the games as much as possible, and also the Frontiers community. Uh, you guys are awesome. I love all of y'all. And thank you so much for the donations. Also, I couldn't really say much, but you guys are all epic. And the crowd also. Thank you so much.
I mean, hey, you have to say it. Um, you can find me at uh, the Alpha Dolphin on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. And uh, where can you, where can I find you, two commentators? <laughs> well, you can find <laughs> you can find me. My name is Emerald. Uh, it's spelled goofy. It's with no A and two Ds. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's the same on everything. So uh, Twitch, YouTube, all that. Uh, I make speedrunning content for Sonic and maybe some other games too. Uh, there's actually a really cool video that I have on my channel that showcases a lot of the tricks in this run in a very digestible form. It's called uh, Speed Strat Sega Doesn't Want You to Know About, which, by the way, they do because <laughs> Sonic commented on it. So he thinks it's okay. He thinks it's chill. Um, but yeah, you guys, you guys can find me there. And uh, Don? Yeah, and for me, you can find me at DonSR, same platforms, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. Uh, I'm most active on YouTube doing content talking and explaining these tricks in depth. Uh, so if you want to check me out, definitely go check out that. And please, please go check out Alpha. He's awesome. Yeah, an insanely talented speedrunner. He's, he's insane at every game he touches, truly. The world record holder, there's no one better to show off this game. I'm so happy he was able to. Yeah. And let's have a good rest of SGDQ 2023. Woo! Let's go. Signing out. Absolutely incredible start. Uh, before we go to our first break, we had $50 from Strawberry Jam. Alpha Dolphin, Emerald, and Dawn, you guys are killing it. What a great way to start off SGDQ. Around the bloke. Uh, so, we are going to go to our first break. We'll be back after these messages.
Hello, and welcome to another Yeti Direct. Today, we've got some new retro classics coming to the Yeti. This drop is about to hit maximum velocity. Asus gaming monitors and peripherals give you the perfect blend of features and performance for the games that you will love to play. Go to us.asus.click forward slash SGDQ to start assembling your ultimate gaming setup. Coming up after our next interview, we have got Bug Snacks being run by Conception and Lyman. Now, we do have a bid war for that run. The Bug Snacks Journalist Color Choice. You've got choices of black, yellow, or orange. So make sure you get your incentives in for that. And, of course, there is a donation incentive as well. Uh, if we can raise $5,000 towards it, there will be a fight against the Cheddar Bordel Rex. So... If you want to see what a Cheddar Bordel Rex is, you uh, should get your donations in very, very soon. Talking of donations, shall we read some more? We have got, uh, we have got one who is donating on behalf of their four-year-old who loves bug snacks. Greeting from Kuru. That came from Anonymous. Uh, but now we are ready to go to our Mega Man Maker interview. Take it away.